Hello and welcome to The Modern Consultant. I'm your host, Mark Aarons, and on today's episode, I have the pleasure of taking you behind the scenes of a sales campaign that's happening right now. We're talking sales emails that are going out to 626,000 people. There's only so much that I can share because this is an active client project. And so, of course, there's going to be things that I have to blur out, details that I cannot share, but it's pretty exciting. And it's still happening right now. So, of course, sales numbers haven't come in, but we are getting some really cool leading indicators of what's happening, like what I'm about to show you right now on screen. If you are listening in and looking at a screenshot that says, I'm not sure what you're going to try to sell me, but I love this. This is how the world should work. I love these kinds of emails. And in today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you about some of the frameworks we're using to be able to get responses like this. And with that said, here's a bit more about what we're going to cover here today. I'm going to talk to you about the average email open rate. Not talking about data points from back in 2019, because if you search for that right now, that's some of what you'll find. I'm talking as current as September 2023, less than 30 days ago. And I'm going to be talking about how I'm getting 150% to 250% higher email open rates relative to those very recent email open rate benchmarks. And the first step being to increase email frequency. I'll share with you what the email frequency was before and how often we're emailing now and what happened as a result of that. We're also going to talk about why 2,210 people will actually tire than that asked us to sell them something by the third email that was sent out. We're also going to talk about the two kinds of emails I send in every single campaign and how when you bring them together, they build credibility. And then finally, we're going to talk about three subject line templates that you can use right now. So if you're listening in, grab your favorite digital notepad or a piece of paper, and we're going to go ahead and dive into it. This is also relevant for you, even if you're not selling to a large email list even if you have just a few people as an independent consultant or a modern consultant that, you know, you've got high value contracts that you're trying to close, these principles, of course, still apply. Even if you are a, a full-time employee at an organization, you may be needing to sell your ideas to get them moving forward. So broaden the definition of what it means to sell. And we're also going to remove some of the stigma of what it means to sell, because as you saw on the previous, uh, if you were watching this on YouTube, then you saw on the previous slide how we've got people excited about what it is that we have to say, even though we're technically selling, you know, the evil S word. So the other thing you could do is you could also plug some of these subject line templates probably into chat GPT to see what you come up with as well. So here's what you will not learn in today's episode. We're not going to talk about how to scam people because that's illegal on ethical and immoral. We're also not going to talk about how to bother people because that's just self-sabotaging. That's going to burn your reputation as well as your relationships. We're also going to talk about how to improve email deliverability. We're not going to talk about how to improve email deliverability. That is necessary, but it is more of a technical implementation thing, and that is changing very rapidly. I want for this to stay at the strategic as well as tactical level, particularly for creative as well as message and funnel strategy. I also want to, we will not be talking about why emails get an ROI of 40x compared to other channels like social media channels. That's, that's not a false statement. You can Google it right now and then go and look at the studies that report on that, but that's just outside the scope of what it is that we're going to cover here today. Uh, we're also not going to talk about platform-specific tech recommendations. That's definitely something that also changes pretty rapidly. Uh, and so I just want to set some expectations as far as what you won't get out of this episode as well, so that you know that it's going to be worth your time. That said, let's keep it moving forward. So previously on The Modern Consultant, you maybe saw the episode a couple episodes ago where I mentioned that we got 372,000 subscribers in one day. That was just a few weeks ago. And this is going to be a very cool update on what's been happening since then. The other thing that's relevant, if you've been following along the previous episodes, is our nine-step expertise roadmap. I mentioned in earlier episodes, I went on a deep dive 
on a bit of an introduction to the different steps, but this episode is going to be focusing on step nine, which is scaling sales. And more specifically, we're going to be scaling it through the channel of email. And so with that said, let's keep it moving. So as an update to that, you know, 370K number, we also now have this second segment of 253,000 subscribers, right? And so combined, that's where that 650K plus number comes from. I just wanted to point that out and just make it super, super clear. Uh, and I'm going to be speaking out everything that's on the slides for our folks who are listening in on audio only. And to deliver on the first promise that I mentioned, what's current email open rates looking like right now? To find this, if you want to verify this independently, you can go to constant contact. Uh, and if you Google it, it should come up. But average industry uh, email open rates as of September 2023 are actually looking like about somewhere between the range of like, you know, like 20 to as high as like 40% uh, depending on the industry that you are actually emailing. There's an average email open rate that you can look at that, you know, is across all industries. But if you're trying to get a more accurate benchmark, then it makes more sense for you to drill down to your actual vertical that you are sending emails to. For this particular niche that I'm working within right now, it's not the only one that I uh, work within, but technology services. And so we see here that the rate is, you know, 18.34%. Keep that number in mind because like I mentioned before, we're doing sometimes 2x or even higher uh, than this number here. So that said, one of the emails that we sent out during the campaign uh, to the 368K segment got a 53.1% open rate. That's significant. But what I want to draw your attention to is actually the click rate, 0.6%. It looks really low, but if we run the math, that works out to be about 2,210 clicks. That might not sound like a lot until you understand the context of what they were clicking on. The first thing to also note is that this email was about the third email in a larger sequence uh, that I had designed. And it actually invites them to join a wait list to purchase the product. And so that's actually over 2,000 people that are saying, please sell the thing to me once it's available. I know that this number is higher because, again, this is just from one of the segments. Remember, we have like another 200,000 plus uh, emails. And if we just even match like that click through rate, uh, you kind of get an idea of just as far as like how many people are like raising their hand uh, to say, hey, sell us this thing. And I can't share with you the price point that we're selling at just yet, but just know that we've already run the math. And if just the people who clicked on the waitlist uh, buy, that it's going to be a very successful launch, uh, to say the least. And the other thing that I want to call your attention to here uh, is just how the open rates are looking across several emails that we're sending. Uh, if you are listening audio only, I'm looking at a slide right now that actually shows the 250K uh, segment. And one of the first emails has like a 16.4% open rate, then it goes to 32% open rate, then it stays at about 32%. And then it, you see this very low number of 6.6%, .6%, right? Over the course of four days. Now, what's going on here? With the first email, we actually found that, that there were some deliverability issues. And so once we fixed that, we were actually able to get up to like the 30% plus number, which puts us 150% above the email open rate benchmark of about 18% for this industry. It's really cool. Uh, we're doing well is basically the takeaway. However, like a couple days into it, we have the 6.6% .6 open rate. What the heck is going on there? Uh, that's simply because at the time that this screenshot was taken, uh, 
we just hadn't had a full day's worth of data yet. And so that's why that number looks so low. The second thing that I want to point out here is the first giveaway that I have for you, which is the one of the subject line templates that you could be using in one of your campaigns right now. Bonus exclamation mark, all caps. The problem with the blank. I have it blurred out because I don't want to reveal uh, any of the uh, client's uh, data or naming structure or anything like that, their brand name and such. But this structure of this email to give you the context of where this fits into the funnel, there's a lead magnet or a free offer that goes out that engages people first. And then we send out this email that says, bonus, the problem with whatever the lead magnet or free offer was about. And so it's a bit counterintuitive, uh, but it gets people's attention basically because we just sent them something that was from their perspective, very valuable. And now we're telling them that there's a problem with it. <laughs> and so that's a very, very powerful uh, subject line uh, to be able to use to uh, spike engagement. Now, what we actually do inside of that email is we actually share with them that, hey, the problem with what we sent you is that it's a smaller part of a bigger system. And that way we get to be able to introduce them to other products and services and other things that we could potentially be helping them with. It's a very advanced strategy, especially if you have a sophisticated you know, product or service suite catalog and you have other things that you want to sell, which for most businesses that have more than one offer, this is very, very relevant. And so it's just a very nice way to be able to introduce them to other things uh, that you have to be able to help them with whatever it is that their problems and stuff are. So like, that's the first uh, giveaway that I have for you there. So next up, I just switched the slides for my audio only listeners. And now we're looking at the same sequence of emails but this time for the 370K segment. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna look at the email open rates over time. 33.6% was the first uh, email that was sent out. Then it jumps to 51.4%, which is one of the emails that you saw me feature earlier on in these slides. Then it goes to 24.4%. Then it goes to 21.6%. We didn't really have email deliverability issues with this one, but we can already see that we're seeing a decline in engagement. I can already tell you though, from having campaign numbers that are beyond what's seen here, those engagement numbers actually go back up. And so the hypothesis for what's happening here is that it's just towards the end of the week and so less people open emails. And that's probably why we saw lower email open rates here. But again, we can see that the bonus, the problem with blank is actually performing pretty well, very much above benchmark, almost 2X above benchmark. And so we know that that's a very powerful uh, subject line format for us to continue using in the future. Next up, we're looking at some of the replies <laughs> that came in uh, from some of the emails that we've been sending out. We're getting a bunch of replies, which lets me know that it's really engaging because before we're talking a lot about the email open rates, right? And the email open rates basically tell us, okay, well, are the subject lines working? Is it of interest to them? But do they actually engage with the content? Is the content relevant for them? We can do, we can measure that by the number of email replies, especially if the email was designed to be able to uh, spark a response, basically. And so the two things that we check for to see engagement are replies as well as the click-through rate. And for this particular kind of email, that brings me up to the two kinds of emails that we send. Basically, there are emails that help people and there are, people, there are emails that build trust. The emails that build trust tend to do one of two things. They either very clearly articulate the problem that your target audience is having, or they very clearly articulate the shared values that you have with your audience. And that's what's actually happening here in this email. Uh, and as an example of that, uh, 
there's this one email that came in that said, hello, I'm truly inspired by the way you have dedicated to love and mentor your son. He is really lucky to have a present and dedicated father. I have deliberately created time for my babies to like taking my work leave during the holidays. Unfortunately, bosses like that are very rare to find. Thank you for sharing so much wisdom with me. And then there's a picture of her and her children, her three children. And of course, for privacy purposes, this has been blurred out as well as any identifying information. And she goes on to say, this is me and my babies. I know if all parents were deliberate to create time for their children, it would reduce the brokenness of families. Thank you in kind regards. This is a response to a bigger sales campaign sequence. I don't know about you, but if you send sales emails, I don't know if your people respond with pictures of their families, <laughs> but we're doing things differently. And it really uh, just gives me all the warm fuzzies inside to know that every single email that we're sending out are adding value to people's lives and inspiring them and showing them that we're on the same team. We believe what they believe and we can also help them. So I just really, really want to underline that point. That said, there are some people who uh, might get pissed off um, if they don't align with you on values. And this is another example of one of the email templates that I mentioned uh, that you could be using, which is talking about whatever it is that isn't working from a philosophical standpoint in whatever niche you're working with. This is a business development niche, so to speak. And the subject line for if you're not watching this on YouTube is Worka workaholism doesn't work and escapism is a trap. Worka workaholism doesn't work and escapism is a trap. Right here, if you're already familiar with these terms, then you already know that what we're doing is we're basically saying, hey, none of these two extremes are workable. And then, of course, in that email, we then go on to define a third way a third option, but someone responded and as you see here, you know, said, man, you are crazy. I retired in 2014 and since I've been living the life like a Jimmy Buffett song, cruising the keys in my yacht, moved to Florida tropics and have a look back. Now what? Mahi tacos and a margarita. Nope. Sorry to respond. Escapism is not a trap to which I would say good for you. The cool thing that I appreciate about this email though, is that it was respectful. They shared their opinion. It was well formatted. They thought about it and they had a philosophical difference. And they were able to share that without necessarily like, you know, just, just, just being like disrespectful, you know, which for me personally, in this time of division around the world is it's really important to me that we're able to send messages out there that allow people to respectfully disagree with our viewpoint without things having to necessarily escalate. We can disagree and still respect each other. And so I'm really glad that this email came in because, hey, not everyone is going to agree with us and that is okay. So the other thing I wanted to point out here uh, is uh, the email that actually got the person to say, I'm not sure what you're going to try to sell me, but I love this. This is how the world should work. And this right here just really captures the spirit of the email campaign that we're sending out. It's a goodwill campaign. We want people to feel good. We want them to feel inspired and excited to learn, to move forward, to create a better life for themselves as well as others. And based on this response, mission accomplished. Part of the email that we, you know, I can show you the lead here for this email, which is, you know, hey, blank, if there's one thing you should know about me, it's that I don't like being the center of attention. In this email, again, we start off by sharing our point of view, our philosophical stance on just like how we look at the world. And that allows anyone who's reading to be like, hmm, you know what? I like this guy. I agree with that too. I relate to this. Or even if I'm not like that, I respect it. You know, and just like that, we can start to write emails that engage. So we're not just increasing open rates, but we're also increasing response rates as well. And the final kind of email 
that I want to talk to you about is the email will re-add value. And this was one of the responses to another one of the emails that we sent out in the sequence. Thanks, this was really insightful. I've been doing workshops on how to use this particular topic that they are an expert in. And I think I've been talking to the wrong audience because nine out of 10 questions were similar to the examples in your email. It's time for me to rethink my target audience. The email that we sent out helped to explain to them what to look out for when they're in the first steps of doing the thing that we're helping them to do. That's something that you could do right now. Just point out what are some of the common sticking points that somebody has whenever it is that they are trying to get to the goal that you are trying to help them with. Something else that we did that was a nice touch inside of this email that people seem to really, really like is just pulling in a third-party third reference to add a bit of credibility. You don't always have to come up with a signature framework or something else that's your own, so long as if it's relevant, referenced, and resourced, uh, people are going to find it helpful, especially if you add your own point of view and subject matter expertise to it. So that's the third kind of email that you can send. But what about the subject line that actually got the open rates that then it eventually inspired this response? Here's the last email subject line template that I promised. Do you, do people you know talk about topic like this? Question mark. Again, that's do people you know talk about whatever your topic area is like this? That's it. And if you do that, that works for pretty much any single topic that you could possibly be talking about because it's a curiosity driven headline. It gets us to wonder like, oh yeah, do I know people that talk about this like this? Huh, it's interesting. How do they talk about it? And it's a very just like, it's, it's a very informational, curiosity driven, but also lends itself well to being able to teach your point of view, your expertise about whatever the topic area is. And with that, we have covered everything that I mentioned that we we're going to cover. Average email open rate. You now know that the average email open rate well, at least for tech industries, it's about 18%. However, it can go as high as 40% depending on your industry vertical. You can go to Constant Contact, look it up, Google it to find out what the most relevant benchmarks are for your industry right now. And I also covered, you know, how to increase uh, email open rates with these three different subject line templates that I covered and also increasing the mailing frequency we increased the mail. I just realized I didn't cover that fully for you. So here it is. Uh, we increased the mailing frequency from one email per week to three emails per week and then five emails per week. And that actually increased email open rates as opposed to decreasing them because the emails we sent were relevant. People get annoyed with irrelevant emails, but people pay attention when emails are relevant. That said, why 2,000 plus people access to sell them something by the third email? Because we shared with them how it was going to be beneficial. And then we invited them to join the wait list, basically for when it was going to be available so that they could be first in line. And then also spoke about the two kinds of emails that I send in every single campaign. Emails that build trust, emails that help them solve problems, or capitalize on opportunities. In other words, emails that they find valuable. And then finally, we spoke about the three different subject line templates that you can use right now. Over to you. Did you find any of this helpful? What was the most interesting part for you? If you want me to do more videos like this or more podcast episodes like this, sound off, send me an email, type a response, leave a comment somewhere so I can see it, and I'll be seeing you on the other side.